This is the England of glossy travel books. The changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. The dreaming spires of Oxford. But cities and towns across England have undergone a radical change as immigrants from Britain's former colonies have flocked to the United Kingdom itself to live, work, and raise their families. Their children are often caught between the customs of the old country and the freedoms of modern Britain. My family came over from India to England in the 1960s and basically they came over for work. Um, and sadly, they didn't leave their beliefs and values at Heathrow Airport. Bal Howard grew up in a tight-knit Sikh community in the north of England, surrounded by other families who had immigrated from India. But as she would find out, being born and bred in England didn't necessarily guarantee she'd have the same independence as other British women, especially when it came to marriage. I always believed I was going to have an arranged marriage, and always had the opportunity to say yes or no. Um, and then my family introduced me to the man who was going to be my future husband. But I thought I'd have a choice right up until the last minute. I met him for half an hour with the family around me and they said I had to go through with it. But I didn't feel any physical chemistry or attraction or anything like that. And I said no, but my father said to me, if you think about running away, I'll find you. And I'd rather kill you and go to prison than you dishonor the family. It seems unbelievable that a father anywhere in the world would say something like that, but it's happening here in families that seem to be living modern lives in a modern nation. And it happens because some communities hold on to their ancient traditions in which women are viewed as property. It is based on an unwritten code of honor, as some call it, for a woman to disgrace her family simply by going against its wishes is the ultimate sin.